All right, hey guys, happy Wednesday. Um, today for class, we're gonna be talking about um, how to develop your research question. Um, so just to start here is how the writing lab at Purdue University defines the research paper. It says it's not simply an informed summary of a topic by means of primary and secondary sources. Instead, it's a genre that requires one to spend time investigating and evaluating sources with the intent to offer interpretations of the text and not unconscious regurgitations of those sources. The goal of a research paper is not to inform the reader what others have to say about a topic, but rather to draw on what others have to say about a topic and engage the sources in order to thoughtfully offer a unique perspective on the issue at hand. So the most important parts in that definition are that you're spending time investigating and evaluating sources with the intent to offer interpretations, right? Also, you're, you're offering a unique perspective um, that is your argument. It's an argumentative research paper, not an informative research paper. Um, so we're going to watch two videos that are going to help you sort of figure out how to start coming up with your research question. Um, I'm going to give you an example, and then you guys will be off to work for today. So without further ado, here is Jenny. Meet Jenny. Jenny has a research project due in a few days. She picked a topic when her professor first assigned the project. She chose her favorite TV show, Bridezilla's. It seemed like a good idea, but now that she's doing her research, she's having a lot of trouble finding sources. She's freaking out. Jenny's problem started with her mental model of the research process, which she sees as a one-way street. Like many students, Jenny thinks that once a project is assigned, she should pick her topic right away. Then she can move on to finding sources and reading through them. And once she has all her sources, she can start writing her paper. But the research process is a lot messier than that. And picking your topic is intertwined with finding and reading sources and writing and editing your paper. Picking your topic is research. When you first pick a research topic, it isn't set in stone. It's just an idea that you test with some exploratory research. If it looks good, you find and read some more sources. At this point, you might find that the published research leads you away from your original topic. That's okay. You can let the research you find guide you and tweak your topic a bit. And by the time you've gone through this cycle a few times, you may find that you have enough sources to start writing and editing your paper. Even then, as you're writing, you may find that you need to pull in additional pieces of information and you may return to the research cycle. So, let's wind back the clock for Jenny, bringing her back to the day her professor assigned this project, and allow her to do it again with this research model. Again, Jenny picks a topic that is interesting to her, the reality TV show Bridezilla's. As she tests the topic with some internet research and an article databases, she discovers that there is lots written about it in the popular press, but not much scholarly research which her professor requires. Realizing that maybe her topic is a bit too narrowly defined, Jenny decides to tweak it by broadening her scope to reality TV in general. But when she tests this new topic, she winds up drowning in a sea of research, all of which has to do with reality TV, but doesn't tie together to help her form a coherent thesis. Back at the drawing board, she wonders if there's a happy medium between Bridezilla's, which is too narrow a topic, and reality TV, which is too broad. Since Bridezilla's is just one of several reality TV shows about brides and weddings, perhaps there's more written about this subgenre. Testing this topic in some of the library's research databases yields a promising but not overwhelming number of results. Instead of realizing too late that her topic was unresearchable, Jenny built in the time to test and tweak her topic so she could take her original idea and shape it into a topic that she still finds interesting and can realistically use for a short research assignment. If you want to know more about the research process or about how to pick a good topic, ask a librarian for help. Okay, so the most important piece in that um, entire video, I think, is thinking about this like circle that's there. So research, choosing a topic, um, is about picking a topic, testing the topic, finding and reading sources, um, and then tweaking the topic again, and then testing it and finding and reading sources. And like, you really need to be flexible with what your topic is. But I don't even want you to think of it as a topic. I want you to think of it as a question. And this next video is gonna sort of 
um, walk you through that and then we'll um, reconvene. So try to pay attention to this one too. What makes a good topic for a paper? Where do I find a good topic? First, let's throw out the whole idea of topic. The word topic really applies better to a report or a list of facts. What if you could create something that is actually interesting and meaningful to both your professor and to yourself? What if you could learn something that you didn't know before? Let's replace the word topic with the word question or research question. This implies a quest for something. It's more than just a subject or a topic. It implies that you may or may not find a precise answer, that you are involved in an investigation, following the clues and weighing the evidence. What makes a really good research question? Let's start with a regular old question and see if we can figure this out. Do stricter gun control laws save lives? As far as I can tell, this question has only two possible answers, yes or no. You might be able to construct some pretty good arguments for one side or the other, but there's still basically only two sides to this coin. Not a lot of active pursuit going on, so let's try again. Why should the United States increase gun control? Well, this seems to be a little better, but I have a feeling that you either already know the answer or have selected what you believe to be the best answer. Plus, what kind of evidence are you likely to find to answer this question? Let's try again. How does the media influence attitudes towards guns and gun control? This question does not have a yes or no answer. It's very open-ended and it does not try to lead me into an answer. I see possibilities here for investigating the nature of social media, peer pressure, and the like. But there are still problems with this question. When you say attitudes, what are you talking about? The attitudes of any person, old people, young people, all nationalities? What about media? Do you mean newspapers, news channels, Twitter, Facebook, or blogs? That's a lot of territory to cover in a single paper. What about this? How does social media influence teenagers' attitudes towards gun control? Personally, I feel more comfortable with this question, and here are a few reasons why. A. It's not oversimplified. There is no yes or no answer. B. I believe you can locate some evidence, social, psychological, statistical, that would help answer this question. C. It's an interesting and relevant question that you might already be following in the news and on your social media channels. And D. This question is manageable. I believe you could answer it within the confines of the assignment. Best of all, you might learn something new in the process, and your investigation could have positive consequences. Keep in mind that in many cases, your research question will evolve as you do your research. Stay flexible and give yourself time to reevaluate your question as you go. Finally, make sure your question fulfills the requirement of the assignment. And always remember that you are engaged in research to find answers and not to reinforce opinions or ideas that you already have. Okay, so of those two videos, I think some of the important takeaways are, like we said over on the right, that idea that it's like an iterative process. You can't hold on to that same question. And also then this checklist, right, thinking about that it can't be oversimplified. You need to be able to find evidence, whether that's statistical evidence, anecdotal evidence, scientific evidence. Um, it needs to be interesting and relevant to you and also something that's manageable. Um, remember that you do have two months to write this research paper, but like even it might take you a week just to nail down a workable um, starting point for your research question. Um, so I'm just going to give you an example. I know that Miss, I've been talking about dead zones lately because Miss Hesse and I are working on this grant. But um, so I know I'm interested in dead zones in the ocean, right? So I start there, right? And I do a little research. I have to think about like, what am I saying about dead zones in the ocean? So I just start reading about them and I'm interested in what causes dead zones in the ocean, but that cannot be my research question because that is just an informative question, right? Like there's an answer, what causes them? It's a cause and effect. That's just me telling the reader something that they can just look up on the internet. This is an argumentative research paper, which means you need to be making an argument. There's not really an argument there right? There are def definitive causes to what causes dead zones. 
Um, as I read a little bit more, I realize that agricultural runoff is one of the um, biggest problems. So the, the, these farms that line the Mississippi River, there's all this nitrous, nitrogen-rich um, nutrients being dumped into the water, and then those are causing these algae blooms. And when those are rotting, those are taking all the oxygen out of the water. So I, I can I learn about that process, right? But if I was reporting that back to the reader, that's still just information that I'm reporting back that they can look up. There's no argument in it. So I have to keep on digging, right? So then I start thinking about, well, what are things that people are doing to solve this problem? So now I'm, I'm consulting scientists, right? So what are different people who are working to create solutions doing to stop agricultural runoff from causing these dead zones? Still just reporting though, right? So then I, after I've read a bunch of them, I think, well, you know what? I have an opinion now. I think that this one way is more effective than other ways. And I think it is the most effective way. And now that's what I'm going to be arguing in my research paper, right? What is the most effective way to stop agricultural runoff from causing dead zones? That is the thing that I'm going to argue. I'm going to, I'm going to present my reader with some, some different options of things that are used to, as solutions to it. And then I'm going to argue which one is the most effective. I might in my research include something about how consumers can change their behaviors to stop agricultural runoff from causing dead zones because I'm really interested in that, how like our small actions impact these larger systems. But that can't really be my research question. Um, as of right now, until I do some more research, it might change as I, as I do research, but I have to keep it with something that's arguable. So although I can include information in, in the latter part of my essay about consumer behavior, I'm really going to be arguing which is the most effective way. So what you guys need to do today for the remainder of the day is to sort of start Googling. Think about what's something that you're interested in and go down a little rabbit hole and try to start coming up with, hmm, is there, some, is there something I want to say about this topic that's an arguable claim that I can use as my research question, okay? So good luck. If you need anything, you know where to find me. Just reach out via email. All right, thank you very much. Good luck.